the YouTube feed. And okay, we're good. And I'll, and I'll join, I'll, I'll be here. I'll, I'm gonna lick my video off so you have more bandwidth. And, uh, but I'll be here in case you need something. Okay, <clears throat> great, great. Well, thanks everybody for tuning in to another Zoom meeting. I hope everybody is well. Um, we're going to try to crack along here and um, move right into the uh, approval of the agenda. Uh, I know that uh, I had recycling composting somehow on there twice. So I would like to make a motion that we remove one of those and that we insert the virtual HES topic uh, in place of that, perhaps uh, in number 10. That was the Eversource uh, free home evaluations we were going to talk about. So uh, Val sent something out to everybody. So we'll just add that to the agenda if, if, um, if that's acceptable. Yep. Okay. So moved. So moved. All in favor. Aye. Aye, aye, aye. Good, good. Any, any other additions, changes, corrections? Otherwise, the agenda is, uh, is approved. Hearing no objection, we'll move on to the approval of the June, June 11th, 2020 minutes. Are there any um, any comments, changes, corrections to the minutes? Okay, I have a motion to approve the June eleventh meeting uh, minutes, please. I move to um, accept the meet or approve the meetings as pre uh, the minutes as presented. Okay, very good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the next item is um, uh, a topic about coordinating with planning director and environmental planner. So uh, we were able to set up a meeting, Jose, um, Stephanie and Val Rossetti and Vic, Vicky Resky met last week and um, really established some, some process for working together with Jose and uh, Stephanie. And um, I do have an, uh, an announcement to make with regard to Vicki. She called me this afternoon and indicated that she uh, very regretfully would be stepping aside from CEC. She just has an awful lot of things that are going on and uh, trying to make her life a little bit, um, a little bit less crazy. So, uh, but she will stay on and work with the sustainable CT project. Um, and I said, I thought we might recruit her for another couple of projects as well, but, and she certainly will be missed. Um, so we will have a, a vacancy uh, on the committee. But anyway, back to the, the meeting. Um, and please, anybody else who was there, um, feel free to, to jump in. Uh, we really wanted to establish a process for working with Stephanie. We're very excited to have her on board, but uh, wanted to make sure that there was some uh, conduit through which we could work and we all knew who our, we were reporting to and that kind of thing. So primarily her, her responsibilities are updating the plan of correction, our plan of correction, that's my old public health days, um, <laughs> plan of conservation development and, and working on sustainable CT. So a lot of the projects that we work on uh, in this committee will be um, sustainable CT uh, projects, and then the plan of correction, uh, plan of conservation development is a whole other big, big project. So we're going to meet um, once a month um, for about an hour or so, and just check in and um, and see where we go from there. So next next Thursday, uh, anybody is welcome to to join us. And uh, Jose is going to send out a letter to some of the other people in town, commissions and committees, and let them know that uh, Stephanie is here and, um, and invite them to join when, when it seems to be an appropriate topic for them to be joining in on. Uh, anything else on that, Jose, do you wanna, or, or Stephanie? <laughs> What, it's the third Thursday of the month at what time? 3.30. And we, we, did a, we did a Zoom call and we'll do that, I guess, as long as we, um, it is appropriate. 
Well, there's Celine. I can see you now. Your your mic is off, but I can see you. Okay, uh, the next topic is uh, improving the urban tree canopy um, and rescheduling speakers. And I, I know Paula and uh, Vicki were going to get together and, and talk about putting a plan together. So I don't know where that stands given the news about Vicki. Um, well, where it stands is it's in process. Um, I've had a hard time uh, getting a response from DEP. Um, we had two contacts there. I was working primarily with Chris Donnelly mm -hmm. um, and he had brought in Andrea Urbano. Um, I emailed them both. I didn't get a response. Um, I actually left him a message today, um, just trying, hoping that I would, you know, a voicemail today, just hoping I could establish contact. Um, so I, what I would propose doing is, um, you know, updating the committee by email once I get a response for, from him. And if I don't hear from him in a day or two, mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna go to Andrea. Um, I did send an email to Vicki because what we had um, talked about doing was bringing in Ron Pitts when we did the rescheduling because Ron and Chris had worked together quite a bit. Um, I haven't heard from Vicki and I know Vicki was um, away for a bit and I think that could have interfered with kind of, uh, you know, the communication. So um, that's kind of where we are. I will keep working on it and hopefully have um, some news that I can send out to the uh, committee. I had thrown out um, when I first emailed deep, I'd thrown out, you know, potentially August and September dates. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of what's out there. But, um, you know, that may be something that the committee wants to think about. Um, you know, it seems like our plate's filling up pretty, pretty rapidly. We've got a lot of things going. Yeah. So, um, so that, that's where it stands. Okay. All right. So we'll just keep it on the agenda. Yes, Jose. Yeah, I, I have another uh, participant, but I only have a phone number. If they can identify themselves, if it ends in 596, I'll, I'll put a name to it so we have a record. 596, phone number that ends in 596. Can you tell me who you are? Yeah, Nancy Bowden. Oh, okay. Hi, uh, Nancy. But that way, when you speak, you'll be uh, have a Nancy Bowden. Hello, Nancy. Hi, Nancy. Hi, Nancy. <laughs> Thanks for joining. Um, All right. Okay. So we should identify when she she'll be identified in the list. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, we're interrupting. All right. That's good. It's okay. So, so Jose, I have two pictures of you and none of Nancy. Not that I don't want to see you, but. Nancy's on phone at all. Uh, oh, that's just why. on the phone. Got She's it. just on the phone. Okay. Perfect. So that's that's why you won't see her. And I'm going to get out of my video also. Okay. And the other person we're expecting is, is Claudia Guardiac. So I did not hear that she was not coming. So she may may turn up. Okay. Um, okay great, Paula. So we'll put that on the agenda for, for next month. And uh, good luck trying to track people down over the summer. It's not easy. Hang on a second. Claudia, yeah, I got her. She she Good. didn't sign in under under her. Uh, oh, she's under an alias. <laughs> yes, she was. She no, she 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 logged in under the attendee on on the agenda oh. instead of her panelist. So I had to promote her. So she's she should be on right now. Okay. Yep. Hi. Hi, Claudia. She's on mute. Just unmute yourself herself okay. and turn on her video. Okay. Okay, so, so the next next thing we were going to talk about, um, hi Claudia, hi, is uh, the P Pollinator Pathways Program. Um, and Zeline had sent out um, a great article that she'd written for, was it Audubon? The Crest is the publication. The Crest, yeah. Audubon, yes. yes. <clears throat> and that, that article was basically written to focus on birds and how creating pollinator pathways um, will help birds. So the main intent is to show how by attracting pollinators, we're attracting insects, we're attracting um, caterpillars. And in the article, um, if you read it yet, um, one family uh, require about 6,000 to 9,000 caterpillars in order to be raised to maturity. 
So, and that's in a 16 day period. So this is why it's so important, not just to attract butterflies and bees, but also to attract our, our um, insects and mm -hmm. butterflies who create caterpillars. Um, so that was the intent of the article. Also, I don't know how many of you saw the uh, presentation last night, the webinar by Morgan. Mm -hmm. That's excellent. It was great. Uh, yes, <clears throat> it made some of the same points that I did and especially um, recommending two books. Actually, I have them here. One is, uh, I don't know if you could see this. Um, well, it's called Nature's Best Hope, A New Approach to Conservation That Starts in Your Yard by Doug Ptolemy, who is an incredible person. Um, he's an entomologist and um, an ecologist. And his first book was Bringing Nature Home. Um, how you can sustain wildlife with native plants. He spoke at uh, the Simsbury Land Trust meeting a while back, and I've heard him since then a couple of times. He spoke at the Hort Society, and um, either of these books is a must read, really, if you're concerned about pollinators, or just to, um, creating a landscape that's good for wildlife of all kinds. So, so can you say a little more about what's happening in, in Bloomfield? I know I asked you whether Bloomfield had sort of yes, uh, I, become officially part of that program and what does that mean? The uh, beautification committee has created um, kind of a chain of areas that they have planted. And I did um, email Sharon mm -hmm. to try and get a list of all of them, but she never got back to me. Um, but if you go to the town hall, um, you can see some very nice pollinator plantings that have been done around the town hall um, and around the uh, police building. Mm -hmm. um, they planted a bunch of winter berries, which are good for, well, for pollinators, but also the berries are great for the birds in the winter. And there are a bunch of other places. I think they did seven or eight different spots in town, starting north and heading south. And it looks like a little chain, but I couldn't get a, a hold of Sharon, so I don't have all of them. But basically, it's the um, the BBC that's uh, doing this. Mm -hmm. I know there was talk about linking church churchyards and, yes. and so churches, um, other buildings. I've noticed around even on Route 44, some of the shops are landscaped now with pollinator plants. Mm -hmm. um, it's really something to see. And I don't know if they're doing it for this particular reason or just because they look pretty, but mm -hmm. um, it's a good thing to see. But Bloomfield has officially joined the pollinator project. We were there from the start. Um, I was there, Sharon Mann was there. Um, we were from Blue the ones from Bloomfield and we haven't met in quite a while now. It's kind of slow down with the COVID problem. Uh, the last thing we did was we created subcommittees to do different tasks. Um, and to, but we, I don't know, it's kind of stalled for the moment. Okay. So where could we get those little signs if I wanted to explain why my garden looks like a mess and it's really, it's really for pollinators? Um, yes, I have one in front. Well, you've got to go to, uh, poll it's a, a website, pollinator slash, I mean, dash pathways.org. Okay. And you can read all about it. Um, I, in the, in the um, email that I forwarded you with my article at the end mm -hmm. of, the, um, <clears throat> of that article, there's a bunch of links, um, especially there's one from the Connecticut Audubon that's excellent. And within that, um, that link there are many other links. They can tell you how, what plants you should plant, what, how you should landscape for wildlife. Mm -hmm. Many, many uh, texts available on that now. But I still think the Bible and Doug Tallamy's books um, and 
there are many places where you can buy these plants. Mm -hmm. Most garden shops are getting wise to the pollinators mm -hmm. and they have the American Beauty series of plants, which are all native plants. Um, and there's, there are a bunch of different places. I like, um, well, in Bosco's in Simsbury um, has a nice selection of native plants and that's close. Mm -hmm. Some of the other places are further away. Mm -hmm. Arrow, mm -hmm. right. uh, nature, nature Works. Nature Work is one of the best. Mm -hmm. uh, I get their emails and they're extremely informative. But they're in Northford, so if yeah. you, you know you have to make a trip to go there. But I love them; they're fantastic. Yeah, that's great. Aileen, do you think you could uh, get that list of where the pollinator gardens are here in Bloomfield? And, I and tried. I'm not getting a response. Did you call her up? I emailed her. I don't even Paula? have a phone number. Go it's ahead, Paula. Very helpful to to see it and have it. <clears throat> She, she's she's been a little overwhelmed because she was the one working with Dave Malesko on the land trust presentation. I know, I know. So, so, so um, well before that, and I, uh, I, I will text her. How's that? Okay, <laughs> you can that. I'll, I'll, I'll see. If, I'll see if I get. I'll see if I get a response. I'll, I'll tell her to respond to the Zeline um, because uh, I, I do know she's been a little bit overwhelmed. Um, can I just make a couple of quick comments or, or questions? Sure. Um, Actually, um, I'll just make a, a comment. Kevin and I were at Nod Brook Wildlife Management Area today, and it was such a great place to be because there was one real sandy stretch with a lot of dirt, and there were all these ground nesting bees. It was fabulous. Mm -hmm. okay. So there were, there were bees everywhere, but they're solitary bees. They don't sting. So it was really neat. And then, and then the fields were, you know, there were lots of different um, native plants coming up and so there was a lot of activity with butterflies and things like that so it was fun to walk there after having been to the presentation oh, yeah. uh, the one other comment i will make is um i do know that you know maybe there's an opportunity for someone to do some education around this because um there was an admin and education subcommittee meeting of the council the other night where for the second year, um, complaint by neighbors of a property on one cul-de-sac in town where they're trying to grow kind of a meadow area. Mm -hmm. um, that was addressed. Right, but the point is the neighbors don't understand what's going on. So I think, you know, I think, I, I just make the point that People don't get it. And that's one of the things that Marjorie was talking about. Um, yeah. And if you will notice that question came up several times, because I think there's a lot of resistance. People like their nicely groomed wands. So I, I really like that. And um, in fact, a few years ago, a friend of mine, um, she has gorgeous gardens in the front of her house. And, but her grass was a little too high and their neighbor complained, this was grass. And there isn't a town ordinance that your grass can only be a certain, I think 12 inches or something. And so she got a citation and she had to go to town, you know, to justify it. Um, so what we did was we submitted, um, you know, they have uh, the best gardens, they have awards every year we submitted pictures of her garden to the beautification committee and she won an award. Mm -hmm. So there you have it. Well, thank you. So, uh, yeah, Val. Just a couple for the minutes. Deline, could you tell me the name of your, the um, public, where your article was published again? It hasn't come out yet, but it okay. was the Crest. Okay. EST. And that's okay. the Hartford Audubon publication. Okay. And if you have the, I, I guess the Zoom link for the pollinator lecture and the um, mm -hmm. where people get the signs, I would put them in the minutes for people. And the, the, my last question is, is there a sustainable Connecticut action linked with this that we could um, apply for? I have no idea. 
Is that is Stephanie on? Which yes, you know? there is. There is. Uh -huh. Great. Well, that's that's wonderful. If we can fold that all into into that and keep keep the project going and, and involve the beautification committee, obviously, in in that part of the discussion on uh, sustainable CT. Um, and the, the Winterbury Land Trust has a link to the pollinator talk. They videotaped it, and uh, somebody wrote a stunning report for the newsletter, um, who shall be nameless. And so it's also up there and a, a nice uh, PDF. Um, with all kinds of resources. So that, if anybody didn't see it, she, she talked so quickly and it was so fun, so full of information. Uh, it was almost hard to keep up, but it was, it was very good. Okay, um, moving on to uh, recycling and composting. I don't know that we've, we, we sort of last, last time decided, I think that uh, there wasn't a whole lot we could do until things opened up a little bit, but I just wanted to, um, I know a few things have come up this month on that, so speak well, away. I can, uh, I, Val may have something too, but I uh, did I did talk to Stephanie. Um, mm -hmm. and I noticed in the minutes from June that she is willing to be part of any presentation uh, in conjunction with the library. Great. Uh, so I hope that's still true, Stephanie. Um, yes. Um I know we were, we got to a point where, um, well, we came to an agreement. Yes, it'd be great to do this. I got um, another master gardener, a uh, master composter, sorry, to agree to do the presentation with me. It really is about location. I know that Elizabeth Lane at the library is interested in one of the locations being something. It's really about the virus. Um, Nancy, you might be able to speak to this as well. I'm wondering if we could even use Northwest Park maybe as a location because it's all very well talking about these, but I think that it would really enrich the experience if we've got a site. And the project Nancy and I are working on, mainly Nancy, I'm just a tag along once in a while, at Northwest Park, we, we have an established compost um, system there. So that could be a little bit of a hands on experience. So if I understand correctly, this would have to be in person. It wouldn't be a uh, Zoom. Well, I just don't see what we're offering that isn't already out there on countless platforms of fantastic videos and handouts. Is The Master Composting Program itself uh, at Yukon offers many resources. So if we're doing it, then we, I feel like we should be adding to the experience, in which case, if we've got, um, you know, the protocols in place for, you know, a little bit of distancing, wearing masks. Um, again, Nancy, you might want to speak to this because we are trying to do events there with the same um, protocols in place. Um, I don't know, it's just an idea, but we could also do a makeshift composting, especially if we can come up maybe with different types of composting systems. But I think the hands-on experience might be nice. It's just, otherwise I don't really see the point of us doing I mean, uh, anything at all, really, unless we're offering something different. Okay, so um, this might not be a different thing, but I did speak to Sarah Ray from the library. She's the adult um, person for programs, um, for adult programs, I should say. Um, she was very enthusiastic about offering a program, and if not possible in person, to do it through Zoom. Um, and she said they're scheduling now for fall and early fall. So if we wanted to, um, we could have something through the library. Um, and she asked when would be a good time, evening or afternoon, I thought maybe evening, uh, but that I would bring this to the committee and see what you thought. Yeah, I, I <clears throat> appreciate your comment Stephanie but I think for lots of for lots of us even though the information is out there having it pulled together in one place and publicized by the town it's like a forum to get people engaged it's kind of like you know we all should know how to recycle right and if you go on the internet you have that information mm -hmm. but having somebody actually 
present it was was very helpful. So I personally think it would be great, even if it's a even if it can't be in person right away. Um, and so is Northwest is this in Blue, Northwest Park composting is in um, is that in Windsor? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So I was just, um, but anyway, I, I mean, I, I think it would be valuable to have a, a live, a, a Zoom presentation, but that's just my opinion. Could there what be I can... a demonstration at Shred, at, at Shred Day that people could see? Oh, good idea. Yeah. Well, one thing, um, so we can do a recording and have a small group maybe of an in-person um, demonstration. We could couple that with Shred Day. Uh, we could also do, um, we can also do a worm bin uh, presentation. I think will be valuable because not everybody lives in houses. And I think that worm bins will serve a different part of the population as well. Um, yeah. Nancy, are you there? I don't want to be speaking about Northwest Park because it's your baby. Um, but I, I, yeah, I mean, I, I actually had not known what the agenda item was about from previous meetings, so I didn't have that much to say. But we could, you know, we can certainly film a video presentation. Um, and the idea of doing it at Shred Day is kind of interesting too. If we had a little tent with a booth and we could show the video you know kind of play it over and over or something and then either have someone there or have some examples I assume that from the conversation that we're talking about encouraging people to compost it you know in their own yards at their homes or in their basement is that what we're talking about that's the plan yes this is Carmela's um, project so Carmela approached me and then I was just connecting the possibility of doing um, a northwest park becomes well, it's an educational garden, and so it's an educational garden, and we already have the bin set up. And so that's where Stephanie, excuse me, Stephanie, your words there's a garble or something is wrong. We can't, I can't understand everything you're saying. It's not coming from me, I think it might be the background in Nancy. Um, that's what Okay. You, sorry, do you want to repeat something? Yeah, so, I mean, we can definitely have programs in Northwest Park under the, we're there under the um, rubric of the Master Gardeners of Connecticut. That's where we're working on an organic, an organic garden, and in there we have a composting system. So we have that space. We can have evening events um, or weekend events. Um, and you know, it's not really the part of the park per se. I mean, it's not a park program, it's just in the park, but it does require, you know, the <laughs> getting Bloomfield people to come over to Northwest Park. <laughs> so, um, that's, you know, not that that's a hurdle, but they know most of them probably don't know where Northwest Park is, so even right. that far. So why don't we use, um, let, let's not... Yeah, location for the issue. So why don't we um, do the shredding today as um, a piece in itself and then use um, maybe Wintonbury Library might have a large enough space where we can have the physical distancing there and we can get volunteers maybe to bring different um, types of composting structures and um, I mean, it would take a little bit of work to, to put it together, but I think it could be quite fun. Um, and then, yeah, videotape it. And that way, uh, like you say, Val, um, this becomes a boom field. Bring it closer to home and a little bit more sort of accessible. Is there, could, and so, so just, just to come full circle on Prosser Library and their offer, is there, um, I mean, should we look for um, somebody from deep to come, you know, who might be interested in doing that? I, I'm picking up, uh, you, uh, you and Nancy don't think it's particularly useful to do that, but 
I don't know. I don't, if that's I don't, I mean, you can if you like, but you've got you've got deep and then you've got master composters. I represent master composters. I'm just saying that I that's what they do. They do educational outreach on composting. It's their thing. So right. we've got a whole team of people who would love to do some educational component. That that's why we do the program. It's it's so that we can volunteer our time to Oh no, yeah. No, I totally get that. I'm just I'm it just sounds like there's a resistance to actually doing it on a Zoom platform through Bloomfield Library. I'm just I'm just wanting Whatever, Carmela, what do you what do you think? What would you like? It's this is your thing. This is your well, I, well no, I um, my sense is to start at the library and, and that being just the beginning. I think the um, in person observation of the actual doing it at Northwest and filming it, which you know might also pose some challenges, but I think that's a good idea. Um, and I, uh, Stephanie, you know, might do the presentation with you at the library or beyond that. Uh, it doesn't have to be someone from deep since the resources are, you have the resources and UConn is, has resources. Um, <clears throat> But I think it, it takes more than one shot. I think the library would be, mm -hmm. uh, and then I think we, should, we have to keep educating. Uh, I don't think it's just a one shot deal. I, I, I'm having a hard time visioning how it would be done at shredding day. My recollection <clears throat> is that cars come in, they drop their stuff and they keep going, especially now with COVID. I mean, I don't, I don't see how we can get people to come and watch or whatever, I don't, but if you can uh, walk me through how that might be, that mm -hmm. might be a good thing well, too, we, I don't know. If we combine it with um, also people collecting their food scraps, then we've got the composting right there. I mean, I mean, we've got the components, the, the next thing would be location. So if we can get an okay to have, to create a compost pile, that can remain an educational compost pile for a little while and then removed. That that's also an idea. Well, can I just make a, a, a go ahead, Paula? No, I was just going to say I, 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 it's like I think what Carme Carmela said was kind of where my head was going. Mm -hmm. I think this is kind of you got to take some baby steps for some people. So I think the notion of you've got beginning composters or composting 101 or pre-composting, remedial composting. <laughs> um, I, I think the idea of having kind of an introductory thing at the library, um, the demo stuff sounds fantastic. I mean, seriously, but it sounds like that's for almost like when you hook people and like, yeah, they want to do it. So it seems like it's a multi-step kind of thing to me. Yeah. And then, and then it could move on to uh, Northwest Park and and see in person and get dirty. Um, okay, so um, Carmela and Stephanie, do you want to take the lead on this and, and nail down the library for September? What and what day would be good? They asked me. Would we want it in an evening? And uh, do we want it on a Thursday or is another day of the week better? Uh, well, they may have some limitations on what they what they have available. Uh, my my thought would be an, an evening around this time. And um, remember, in September, um, the light we don't have such long days, so around this time we're getting close to eight. I'm not really sure we can do anything close to eight o'clock on a in a September, unless you're thinking inside. Yes, at the library. Yes, inside. If we can, if not, we'll, uh, it'll have to be Zoom. Yes, I mean, we've been doing all of these webinars. Uh, I guess my mind right. was going to, to doing a webinar where we have the speakers and then people can, yeah. can sign in. We do Ask the advertising questions. for it. Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to contact Dawn Petinelli and put it out to her. She's a coordinator for this and then she can um, look for, um, you know, people who want to do Zoom presentations. Um, I'm sure there are plenty of people looking for these opportunities because like Paula says, we probably want to do this a few times, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It can be recorded 
if we do it on Zoom, it can be recorded and uh, yes. keep putting it in the messenger or letting people know this is available. You know, I think it's something we have to keep keep at and remind people and invite right. them to look at the recording. And, part, and we can populate our website with it, mm -hmm. which is another topic further down the agenda. Right. So is there an evening that um, would be good? I, the library seemed pretty open, and pretty available for September. Okay. I know the third Thursday is, uh, Thursday is generally good for people. I know the third Thursday is not good for me. Second and third Thursdays are not good, but. Uh, Doesn't have to be a Thursday, first, it could be another day. Yeah, could be another day. Um, why, don't you, why don't you see what the library has available and then just send it out to the committee and we can, uh, let you know how many people would be interested in that or vote on the best day, something like that. Or you can just call me and we'll make a decision. Was there, was there good attendance at Wednesday night's pollinator lecture? Yes, they were 59 people, I think, signed up. Well, maybe it, that's a good night. Yeah. yeah. What night was it? I forget. That was a, that was a Wednesday. Wednesday. Okay. Yeah. Oh. And I'm sorry, I'm, I just got a text back from Sharon, so I'm asking Zeline, you had asked for a list of the pollinator pathway gardens that they did in Bloomfield, the beautification committee? Yeah. Okay. She, she just wants to be clear on what you want, so. Yes. <laughs> Good. Got it. I'll tell her. Okay, great. Okay, great. And Carmela, feel free to check in with me or Stephanie along the way if you have questions about the library and so no. Okay. Um, didn't mean to cut you off, Carmel. Uh, under, under this agenda item, there's a, a, another thing that got postponed mm -hmm. like the plan in advance was inviting Seabury and Duncaster and Blue Earth Composting to attend one of our meetings with the thought that there could be a joint project with the three of them that uh, I, I know Seabury was interested in potentially partnering with Duncaster, which I guess is already operating. Um, but I think it that I'm just looking for a rescheduling date. So would October, you know, should I, in order to invite everybody and, and not get us too jammed up? I know I know we have a tree person, and um, I'm, I'm looking for a date to a meeting date to shoot for. Yeah, October, October sounds good. Okay, I, yeah, I think um, the other thing I wanted to mention under this agenda item was um, the beginnings of trying to investigate uh, the town's trash and recycling program. Uh, we did have a meeting with Robert Smith a while ago and, and what came up was a discussion about the increasing tipping fees for garbage, the um, actually the inability to gain any revenue by recycling and whether we, the town it should at some point consider a paid throw program. So I, I just, I, I do know from talking to Nancy Haynes, the purchasing director that the current contract with American Waste will be, I guess, up next June. So she will be putting together an RFP. And one thing we could investigate and talk to the town manager about is, you know, uh, Sustainable Connecticut has a, has a smart, it's called SMART, smart recycling and trash program. It, it, I mean, it's a complex, complex subject. So the other, the other possibility was in their request for proposal that we, we ask for a sturdy flyer or a refrigerator magnet or a waste bin sticker or something to go out to each residential household to help with proper recycling. So I'm, um, that, that's on our, our list of potential upcoming projects.
Charlie, your microphone is uh, is not on. Thank you. If everybody could turn their mics off when they're not talking, I think it would cut down on the feedback that we're getting. Um, so David, could you fill us in on the on the school bus? I would say the the progress is slowing down. Um, we made an effort to co contact Eversource and over three weeks now they have not, we, we talked to them and they said they'd get back on the contacts with DATCO and they just have not produced anything. And I've contacted them two more times with, uh, with no data. I, I wonder if Wayne Casper is away right now, but the, the effort to get the DATCO people at our school bus depot to tell us what kind of capacity we already have there is an important piece of information because it defines how much infrastructure needs to be in a grant. Um, so that's, that's a, an immediate target. The second immediate target is to decide what size bus Bloomfield would need. And the requirements for buses in the presence of COVID are very complex with people, 72 capacity uh, buses may be carrying 12, 15 kids. So that really compromises the ability to get a smaller bus, which would be nice because the price is less. The VW grant should come out this month. When the deadline is, I don't know. Bloomfield qualifies for a VW grant. I've made three efforts now to find out what other towns qualify, towns that were in the toolkit uh, group of seminars, and I don't get that information from the directors of the, stool, of the toolkit. So there, there are clear objectives of where to go and what information to get right now. The information is slow in coming in. And, and you think that, um, that Wayne may be away? He's, he's not jumping in know, to he, give you? He hasn't, he hasn't <laughs> responded to me in over, a, well over a week now and okay. I've, I've called him, I called him today. Mm -hmm. I've emailed him multiple times mm. um, and I don't get a response. He said the DATCO people were coming back from, from, from those who had been laid off, um, but we don't have any data yet. Okay. All right, well, thank you for plugging away on that. It's not easy when people don't call you back and when you've got pieces that are crucial. Um, and then when it's a company like Eversource not, not calling back. But thank you for pushing it ahead. We just keep nibbling away. That's good. Okay. So the, the next series of um, items on the agenda have to do with uh, mostly with energy issues. Um, Val and I met with the town and David met with the town manager um, after our last meeting. And it was very positive. And we have actually gotten from him, uh, we were talking to him about the Green, Green Bank Municipal Assistance Program, which um, offers a whole bunch of uh, services to the town to assess the sites and uh, figure out which are the best for putting solar, um, solar roofs on and potentially solar parking lots and, um, and, it, and leading to a power purchase agreement, uh, which then the town immediately begins to save money on its electricity. And those, those costs are, uh, those savings are locked in for the life of the, of the roof. So it's, it's really a, a pretty good deal. And it certainly gives the town a lot of information even if they decide to go a different route, they get, they get um, experts coming in to assess the sites that the DPW people just, they may have the expertise, but they don't have the time to get it done. So we did get that information back on, it's just very rudimentary information that we were requesting. 
on the age of the roof and the, and, um, the uh, that's basically the location and the account number for the town facilities. So we have it for town hall, the police department, uh, human services facility, Prosser Library, Wintonbury Library, the public works facility and the Bloomfield Volunteer Ambulance. So that information has gone over to the Green Bank and they are just wrapping up their um, previous round of, of um, projects. And so they will be dealing with us in the next week or two to just start putting this information in and, and taking a look at things. And I, I think the, the town manager was very receptive to our um, perspective that we wanna do things for the town that are good for the environment, but that are also going to start saving the town money and also improve public health. So I think those are all messages that are resonating now that, that haven't resonated quite as strongly. Um, so that was, that was good to get that, that feedback that quickly. Carly, um, it, it sounded like um, Stephanie set up the portfolio manager account and, and is, is the information you sent to the Green Bank entered into that account? I think they're two different things. Val, can you can you speak to the the energy tracker? Um, yeah, they, they are two separate things. Although the information is is um, similar in some respects. So as far as the um, the energy tracking, there's currently a grant uh, through Sustainable Connecticut for Yukon engineers to help towns transition their tracking software into the EPA portfolio manager. And Stephanie has been in contact with the lead engineer and she's now submitted data on, on her own uh, through her own initiative, which is great to um, get the information on the town and the Board of Ed buildings over there. And they will be um, looking at the Eversource utility bills um, and, and starting to set up the portfolio manager software for the town. We have Stephanie and I and the engineering grad student and the lead engineer are gonna be having a Zoom meeting uh, next, the end of next week. And in the meantime, we're working on really getting buy-in from our DPW director and Wayne Casper at the Board of Education. So I have been in touch with them both twice. Um, the lead engineer has offered to do a webinar for them so they can see what's involved. Um, I believe, once again, Robert Smith has been um, He's been um, supportive of this. He promised to be in touch both with um, Dan Carter, who's serving as the interim DPW director and Wayne Casper. And uh, much like David's experience so far, we have not gotten a positive okay from either party. I, I know Dan is on vacation, Wayne, Wayne got, and got back to me and said he would try to help you. It's extremely busy with trying to adapt the schools for, you know, September start with COVID. So uh, I'm hoping um, that we'll get some actual response. And in the meantime, we're, we're kind of, uh, especially given Stephanie's um, uh, push, we're kind of setting up the system while we're waiting for them. So mm, that's great. Can I fill in? Oh, yeah. we, <laughs> go ahead, Stephanie, please chime um, in. Just because I learned a lot when I was talking to Amy Thompson. So Amy Thompson is the professor who's um, overseeing this whole project. And um, so the grant comes from Eversource and then she has her PhD students actually doing the work for us. So anyone who wants to access the information on portfolio manager i learned everybody has to have their own account which i thought was really interesting but then um one person from each of those departments like um board of ed will have one uh, they'll be doing the schools and the board of ed uh, building and then somebody from public works hopefully will do all the other buildings and they'll be inputting the data the rest of us will go through our own accounts that we set up there through portfolio manager in order to do a read-only access to that 
material that data. So I thought that was interesting already. Um, so the account that I set up is basically just being used right now in order for them to get us to the point where actually they can do 90% of the work. They, now the account has been set up. We've got 19 buildings in that account uh, that eventually will be transferred to, you know, split to the, the two people operating it. And then that will become my read only account. Um, but right now that account is being used by the PhD student overseen by Amy Thompson to input all the data they're getting from all the utilities. Um, so they said they can get us to like 90% there with all the data then what they're going to need from the town of Bloomfield employees who hopefully will come on board soon, they're the ones who need to then give us uh, or give them the two years of data, energy consumption. That's really then brings us right up to where we need to be. So it, I, just so you feel a little bit more positive about this, um, we're actually in really good shape. They're, they're, they're doing all the work they need to do because we've already provided the basic information and the platform for them to do it. So yes, hopefully we'll get the two individuals on board soon and then take us to the finish line there. Mm, that's great, great work, Stephanie. And Val, the, the project, the Eight Town project, can you talk a little bit about that as well? Yeah, so, so that is yet a separate energy initiative and um, Bloomfield got invited to participate to this through the West Hartford energy planner, Catherine Diveny. Um, the eight MDC towns and the MDC are, again, have been invited by Eversource to attend a seminar, introductory seminar about this program, which again is free and Eversource is offering their engineers to these eight towns and the MDC to come and do a free energy audit on two municipal buildings of their choice, after which they will suggest whether there are any energy upgrades um, or systems engineering upgrades that they could do to reduce energy and save money. So again, this is um, a great opportunity. I. I <laughs> I'm not quite sure why the MDC, you know, the, the MDC and the MDC towns um, are specifically invited, um, who knows? But um, the invitation has been, in, uh, again, we discussed this invitation with um, DPW and they've been sent an invitation to the webinar that's gonna happen Wednesday, July 15th. Um, and I'm, I'm hoping that, um, you know, they can, I, I know everybody's busy. The town staff is um, got priorities to work on. But again, this is, this is one of the issues that I hope um, a little bit of time invested could result in energy savings and um, financial savings for the town. So I, um, we're pushing on that as well to see if we can get, get them to sign on there. I don't know if anybody, I, I will not be able, uh, they, they gave me an invitation to sit in on the webinar. I don't know, if, did David leave the room? I don't know if, uh, if uh, he might want to attend since I want, it's next Wednesday afternoon. If he ever, if he comes back. <laughs> I, I will not be, Stephanie, are you going to be available to sit in on that? Um, which meetings is? This is the MDC and Eversource, the energy audit webinar on the 15th. Well, here's David. Let me see, because um, I'm there's sorry, I missed something. What's going on on the 15th? It seems to be a date that just keeps coming up. Is it? And it being tax day. Um, uh -oh. What time is the webinar, is the, the meeting? Uh, I have to double check. I think it might be one o'clock, Stephanie, but I can double check. David, we were just well, talking. Yeah. We I could, but it's, it might be a little tight. There's a Soul Smart webinar that um, I was hoping to have more people come on board with. Um, there's a lot going on with Soul Smart, and um, I don't know how many of you following the webinars with that, but that might be something we can talk about 
at another meeting. Um, yeah, there's, there's a right. webinar. I'm not sure which one is. I'd have to look up which one it is. Um, um, David, are you available on Wednesday, July 15th around one o'clock for an MDC Eversource webinar on energy audits? Actually, I'm sorry, we're not. We're leaving to drive to Michigan, so. All right, I'll, 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 yeah. work, I'll work it out uh, with, um, and if we can attend, we can attend, but. Um, it, I mean, it's an optional thing for us. If somebody can't attend, we'll just have to. I, I can, you know, if, um, if you like, so if you, if you have nobody there and you, you want somebody there, I can be there. Um, I just like have to jump off before two o'clock to get on the other one, but. Okay. Do I'll I need to be out. familiar with uh, anything? <laughs> um, am I just listening in and reporting back? Is that what you're looking for? I'm sorry. On on this program or on, on the MDC Eversource meeting. Um. I yeah, I guess so. That's what I would be doing, just understanding what it is, so that um, it might be an opportunity to recognize the advantages and uh, promote the idea to the town manager if the DPW staff is uncertain about it. Okay, yeah. so somebody can send me the link. Um... Sure, I'll I'll get it to you. Okay, thank you. Great. Okay, um, let's see, the road salt program, reduction program, we talked to the town manager uh, and DPW um, director about that and came to, he's looking into it further, I believe, whether he thought that would be useful for them to get more training on the salt, which saves the town, again, a lot of money, but it sounded a little more complicated than we had thought. So he's looking into that. Um, and the other item we have here is the solar siting. The Economic Development Committee had I put- a question about the solar thing before you move on. Um, somebody, I don't know if it's you Val, somebody was saying that, um, that Public Works had reported they'd already done the training. Well, what he, what he reported was that his, his, he's had a number of staff trained in a, uh, I think it was called the T2, I, I don't, remember the exact name of the program, but it was a road salt reduction program sponsored by like the Federal Highway Administration. And he, when I, we were talking with him, he wasn't sure, you know, whether that was the same thing as the green snow pro thing, whether there's any advantages to repeat training, how, when was the last time they were trained. So he offered to go back and look up the program that they're already certified in and see whether it you know, made sense to dedicate staff time um, and money to this program if there's, you know. So it, it sounded to me like they had, they had a number of staff that had been through, they had been out to Colorado to a specific road salt training program. So I'm not sure that um, we have the answer yet as to whether he thinks it's this particular one. Um, would also be helpful. What well, it sounds to me then, if they have done a training and it's been successful, then haven't we met the goal really? And if that's the case, can we get that as a report? I mean, I, I put in a request to Dan Carter weeks ago on this. Um, I got nothing from him, nothing about, oh, I'll look into it. Oh, I think we did it, absolutely nothing. And so, you know, there just seems to be a lot of lack of communication. I'm seeing on a lot of these topics that they're just people just not talking to us. Well, I, I think that's good feedback. I think it's it's frustrating. I don't know if Jose is still on, but in, I think <clears throat> one of the things we discussed uh, as part of Sustainable Connecticut was inviting DPW staff to be at you know even the next monthly meeting because multiple projects are dependent on their uh, their involvement and, and so this frustration with um, just things left hanging, but it, it is frustrating. I, I totally get it. Um, 
I that's what I would um, vote for having you know the town really commit to participating in some of these uh, efforts. Mm -hmm. And at the end, we'll talk about the changing the meeting time so that might be more accessible to them. Um, so solar siting and the EDC draft ordinance. Um, there was a, a whole seminar um, that was put on by PACE and some other groups on siting of renewables. And it was very good. And um, some people there from New York State who had developed some principles for um, siting of renewables that takes into consideration the, what kind of land you're using, uh, whether it affects the environment, how it affects the environment and the, the view and all kinds of things. Um, and, they, and they talked a lot about the process that they had gone through. So um, EDC had uh, contracted with a company, Goman and York, planning and design, and they prepared a document with a draft ordinance in here. Um, and part of the reason to have this on on the books in town is if a, a large over one megawatt project comes into town, um, the solar siting committee has primary jurisdiction. The town doesn't, other than a few um, things around the edges, doesn't really have a lot of control over whether the, the and how the solar site gets sited. So, but on smaller ones, the town uh, does have some say and it is helpful to the siting committee to have the town's input either in the um, plan of conservation development or um, in the form of some kind of a regulation or ordinance. So they've taken a stab at um, looking at what some of the, the issues might be while supportive of renewables, but also looking at the, some of the concerns that people had expressed about having these rather large three to 4.5 acres is, is a, the standard size, I guess, for a one megawatt solar field. So they take up a fairly good, good uh, chunk of real estate. And uh, EDC had asked for CEC to weigh in on this. So I'm looking to a committee to, um, I sent around a few, a few documents for people to look at, including the draft report from EDC and so from Jose, I'm looking for a little guidance about what the time frame is in terms of our um, input into this issue, and then to the committee um, about how to go about developing that input. Uh, Charlie, uh, yeah, uh, the the actually the 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 ordinance is going to be referred to the Planning and Zoning Commission or the Town Plan and Zoning Commission for their. July meeting, but it won't be it won't be a public hearing yet. They'll they'll decide whether to set a public hearing probably in in August. So there's still some time frame for to weigh in on it. Uh, I think the discussion on 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 at, at the July meeting is just going to be to to sort of uh, set the table for them and say here's how, how everything came about and and give them a chance to to, to look at it and then um, they'll decide when to set a public hearing for it if they want it in the format that it was presented or they may want to cha change it. I don't know, but it's hopefully, hopefully uh, you know, if you can start getting reading through the material and getting your comments in, that's great. But I don't, you know, I don't see anything really happening till the public hearing, uh, which will be in August. So you think there, there would be expecting some kind of a position paper from CEC in August? Okay. If you wish, yes. I mean, obviously, some, some, something, some, some opinion as to whether that you know, and, and and even sooner if you if you read through it and find some things that you think you they need tweaking or make more sense, then uh, you know you, you spot something that you thought was a uh, just uh, need, needed to be uh, added or subtracted. Uh, whatever comments you may have, I think would be welcome. Paula. Um, I guess I have a, a, a couple of questions, um, I guess directed more to Jose, because you know, I, I read the, the um, Goldman and York um, report today or the, the ordinance. It sounds like they're, you know, they were suggesting a couple of different avenues, Jose. They were talking about 
um, plan of conservation and development and how the, the current plan is kind of light on renewables and utilities in general. Um, and then they were talking a bit about kind of our zoning regulations. So um, do you, you know, I, I guess when are we going to start working on updating our plan of conservation and development? Do you see, do you see the town trying to incorporate something on renewables and potentially large scale solar siting in that? And then, you know, it seemed like there was, there was sort of a two tier approach, the plan of conservation and development and then the zoning regs. I mean, the, the short term is the zoning regs and, and even, and I think Charlie said it, even if, uh, we don't have jurisdiction over the large ones on the siting council. I think having some type of statement on the books gives us some, uh, we're a party to, to any of those things that may happen to our, in, in, in Bloomfield. So having, you know, having that on the books gives us a little bit more uh, uh, weight, I guess, before the siting council, other than, you know, being just reactive to something coming in and say, well, we, you know, we don't like it. I think if, if we've, Taking the time to develop a policy and, and some regulations, the siting council is probably more likely to <clears throat> to wait to to, 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 to consider our, our our input on those things. And and yeah, and the plan of conservation development, it's uh, it was uh, it's the the ten year update is is due on uh, on 2022, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, so we got to get started next year. And actually, you know, we're starting uh, one of Stephanie's. Uh, uh, tasks is to look at the matrix that was developed uh, with the goals and objectives at the last one and, uh, and sort of come up with a scorecard as to what was comp accomplished, uh, what wasn't accomplished, what was partially accomplished, and, and perhaps uh, as, as a way to, to start analyzing those items that weren't accomplished, if they were still goals, if still uh, valid, uh, and if they were, what, what would it take to, to get those going? Uh, it, was it money? Was it staffing? You know, those, those type of analysis. So uh, I thought that was a, that would be a great uh, exercise before we actually start going into the next plan of conservation at all. And a lot of the things that we're developing now, obviously, I put in for a housing, affordable housing grant. So there's, there's things that you can develop ahead of time that can fit neatly in, into the plan of conservation development. I think uh, the grant I had put in for, if we get it, was is for a needs assessment. So those type of things that we can do ahead of time will save us a lot of effort when we actually have to do the entire document. Yeah. Yeah, Jose, I had a, a couple of questions for you. So when I read through the Goldman and York um, document, it seemed to imply that there are no zoning regulations currently about solar arrays. Did I, I don't know that I quite understood it. I get that once it gets over one megawatt, it's under the siting council's jurisdiction, but there seem to be some statements in there, like what happens if it's under one megawatt? Are there any current zoning regulations? And I guess the other comment I wanted to make was on the webinar uh, at the end, uh, one of the gentlemen who used to be the, the chairperson of the, of the siting council, um, he, he mentioned that having, having it in the plan of conservation and development was a key factor in, in you know, give us giving any input to the siting council. And he also, he also said, you know, one of the proactive things is having your town kind of look at the current spaces that they would consider as, you know, plausible large solar array sites in advance, so that when the siting council came, it didn't, you know, just turn into not in my backyard, and it demonstrated that the town had. So I wonder what, you know, like, is there an easy, not an easy, but is there a way to, you know, for your department to like, well, you know, three to five acres, it's, you know, that would be in a proper zoned area. I guess we don't have any zoning regulations about solar arrays under one megawatt. Yeah, that, that's correct. I think the, technically speaking, uh, if you try to do a standalone uh, solar farm on a, on a lot, uh, it, it would not be permitted uh, because it's not listed as a, as a permitted use. use. The, ones, the ones that we have had, we've, we've 
they've been put up as accessories uh, to existing businesses, like the one I think at the Pepperidge Farms was an accessory. Um, and, and the residential ones are obviously, are, 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 we treat them as accessory structures, like we do sheds or pools or whatever like that. But the, the larger scale, even at the school, uh, uh, the former uh, behind the Board of Ed uh, was was treated as as a as a municipal facility, I guess, because it was on municipal land, which was permitted in any zone. So, yeah, technically, you can't do a solar farm in, in town right now. So uh, we do need zoning regulations to, and we have to think through where <clears throat> where they might be appropriate. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think uh, having a, something in the books that identifies that, uh, you know, short of the plan of conservation development, I think would still help with the siting council. Please. Showing that we've given it some thought. Yeah, I guess my concern on, on the um, webinar that we were on, a uh, number of speakers talked about the process for developing the principles and, and that go into developing uh, the regulations. And um, I mean, we can all sit around a table and, and come up with what we think are some, some good ideas, but it, it talked about getting many people in town involved and doing educating and, and so on. And this just seems like a very short time frame for us by August to develop something meaningful um, and well-researched and representative of what the town is looking for. Well, yeah, August is, like I said, the commission is gonna decide at the July meeting whether or not to go to public hearing with this. I mean, they may decide if you wanna to communicate to them before the July meeting that you'd like mm -hmm. Some more time, certainly, you know, they could take that into consideration and say we're going to do it in September, uh, if, if if that's more acceptable. So, like I said, there's there's no there's no. Uh, I just threw out August uh, as at least one month beyond July. Uh, yeah, it just it just seems there should be some more of a process uh, for getting public input and getting uh, stakeholders in, involved and um, to come up with a really. Um, thoughtful and, and uh, thorough list of things. Uh, this, this spends most of its time on decommissioning. You know, it, it's just like several pages of how you're gonna decommission the thing um, and not so much in terms of selection of the site and what would be good and what would, what, what would not be good. And it seems very concerned with screening these horrible solar panels from site. And uh, you know, so I, I, that's one person's perspective, but um, I, I think if you got more of a cross section of people from town, they might have some other issues too that you can, you can house them on a agricultural land and have goats and you can have uh, pollinators. And um, so I, th I think there are some other exciting things that, that could be part of a, a report, but um, that's gonna be based on a little bit of research and not from the whole town, so. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that's a valid point. I think that 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 would be a good a good comment, a mm -hmm. short term comment, saying, "Look, we'd really like to delve into this a little bit more deeper yeah. and with a little bit more thought. Uh, please uh, give us some time, uh, you know, at least till September, to, to to try to come up with a a good a good policy and a good regulation." Yeah, or how do we all combine yeah. together to come up with? you know, TPZ and um, economic development and CEC putting together a process to, to, to really develop a thorough uh, ordinance. Good, yeah. Okay. Charlie, Good. where where is the ordinance uh, sample in this document that you send around? Is that- is It's that part of this Goman in New York. Yeah, I have, yeah. I have that and I've, a, I've looked through it, but- It's, but, in, it's in the, I think it's appendix, I think it's appendix, appendix two. So, so what what is is the objective to get an ordinance is, to to write something? Is it? What, I, I'm That's not saying what the objective is. Is the objective to talk about where potential sites are? Um, well, I think it's 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 really the the goal seems to be to have some kind of an ordinance in place so that when somebody says, "I just sold my five acres and I want to put in a solar farm." and it's under one megawatt, then um, the town has some kind of control over that. And then if it's over, when the siting commission comes in, the town has some guidance for them about what they want to see in their town that they uh, they're will be paid attention to by the siting commission. 
Right. How, but, but how does this relate to the the information that the Green Bank might provide on buildings that were suited for solar? Does is this this is totally different? Or? Well, I suppose there's some relation. Those would be municipal buildings, but but in terms of there's some sense in here that they're going to regulate other kinds of solar as well as as large scale solar. So. That, that they might have more to say about residential solar and, and um, other solar sites, yeah. as well as wind and you know uh, other kinds of renewables. It, it just sounds to me like something is floating here and nobody has any real responsibility for right. coming up with an ordinance or for writing up uh, various requirements. Um, so, so I don't know where this is going at all. Yeah, I, I share that. Uh, I share that concern. We've just been asked to have input um, on a report that was developed by Goldman in New York. So I'm, I'm still struggling with that as well. Yeah. I, yes, Paul. I'll, um, yeah, I guess my I think my understanding and, and Jose, please correct me if I'm wrong, is um, this was you know, this was, this exercise was prompted by a member of the Economic Development Commission, just in recognition of the fact that we don't have anything. So, I mean, that's, so, that's so, so I think the feeling that mm -hmm. we're a little bit in limbo is, <laughs> is right. And it's like, this is kind of a, a baby step. Um, I think what was in the report and in the appendices was, um, you know, there, I think my recollection is like, there were things to sort of be aware of. There was a sample ordinance and then there was a policy, which I think was viewed as more of a short-term kind of thing that potentially the town could act on just maybe to have something. And then, you know, talking about plan of conservation and development and all of that. Um, you know, I think, I think there's lots to it. And I think, um, you know, yeah. Who's responsible for what is mm -hmm. obviously a big question. Um, personally, I think the whole idea of trying to identify where in town, you know, where in town, if one of these things comes to town, we would prefer to see it cited is a big thing because these things are going up on good agricultural land. Um, you know, you hear you hear, inst hear hear instances of clear cutting and things like that. Mm -hmm. And the idea is if one comes to town, if we have some say in where it lands, that would be a great thing. So, um, you know, location, you know, what do we need in terms, you know, we're, in terms of our zoning and what's zoned what in town, um, what's zoned industrial, you know, we have a lot of, a lot of acreage and, you know, where do we have preferred places in town and, and Jose would know that better. Um, than anybody in terms of, you know, if one of these comes, where, where would it land? So, um, but it was a first step. And I mean, what precipitated mm -hmm. it was the recognition that we don't have anything. And what happened in Simsbury was something just landed. Connecticut didn't want it, but the other New England states did. Mm -hmm. And so we got it, um, you know, that we have maybe a little bit more input. All right, and I think I think there was a a recent decision that's under litigation now of um, down in more central southern Connecticut where they're basically taking down lots of trees and the, this, there's a concern that it's may impact a watershed and and it's the same kind of situation. The siting council decided that it should be there and lots of people don't want it there, so we're trying to be preemptive, but I think what Paula said is, is right on. We, the, the real way to, the, the sample ordinance is a nice thing for like the scenery around the site and how to decommission it, but it says mm -hmm. nothing about, you know, which which sites would be preferable to place the right. larger what arrays on. It's a regulatory document, not a planning document. So, so, so Jose, is somebody in charge of yeah. writing the ordinance? Yeah, the, the well, the, uh, Don Poland, who works with Goman in York, who's, who's a, a, a actually a PhD in planning, uh, worked with with one of the members. I think Michelle Benoni was a subcommittee of one, and worked with Don to uh, to come up with a 
with, with something with, you know, they reported back to EDC on a monthly basis. Uh, so yes, I mean, ultimately uh, the commission will, you know, if there's changes they want to make or if they want to add, I'll, 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 I'll weigh in and I'll write, you know, what I need to write into the ordinance uh, at, at, at the commission's request. So uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it was written by Don and, uh, and I would work with Don. We've done it before on, Parking, you know, in the center, uh, parking regulations. So it's, it's it's been a formula that's worked before. Where Don would write something, I would look at it. I give him my, you know, my changes and. Uh, and so, and do I, you think that there will be an ordinance by October? Well, it depends on 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 if everyone's in agreement that what we have is 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 good. I, I would hope so I, sooner than later, because again, we, we don't have one. I think Val said it, the, the, the impetus behind this was the fact that uh, there's really no mention in our regulations about a, a, a solar farms. So, uh, mm -hmm. but I mean, there's, there's not, I guess, you know, we've, we, we haven't had one this long and if it takes till October to get a decent one, I guess it's worth the wait. Uh, but uh, my sense from the EDC is they would, Prefer to, that we have one in place sooner than later, uh, just just so we could, uh, and you know, in case something does get dropped in our laps. Yeah, Paula. Just, just a follow up question, I guess, for Jose, because I I think your comment it's a regulatory doc, not a a planning document. I think that's a, a revealing kind of comment. Would it be helpful for CC to um, talk talk a little bit more about? The planning aspects of it, in terms of identification of, of, you know, is that is that a value to you as the planner? Yeah. Yes. I mean, obviously, where 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 the type, where would these things be be more appropriate? I, you know, uh, uh, in terms of talking to people about putting energy facilities like, uh, you know, uh, ter uh, north uh, off of. Uh, Terrafield Road, right, right near the substation there, the St. Andrews is. Uh, th there's some land available there that people have talked about, just because it's right near that big substation. So whether that's an appropriate site or not, uh, it, it is the type of site that people are looking at because they can get to the grid fairly easily mm -hmm. uh, at that site, and there's quite a bit of land available uh, around it, including some Eversource, Eversource owns a lot of that land. And but there's there's some private land that people have looked at and uh, and have talked about either uh, solar or even the, the the fuel cell the backup battery uh, I don't know exactly what the, what the term is for it but uh, sort of a uh, the you know backup uh, type of power that would uh, go into the grill grid I mean. All right, so so we should we should probably um, get together in a smaller group. Is anybody willing to do that in between? It doesn't sound like we have a lot of time. I'll try. Okay. Anybody else? Thank you, Paula. Uh, yeah. yeah. And I know you're away, Val. Anybody? Yeah, I'm away the first week of August. So. I don't know. You're, now you're muted. <laughs> yeah, that was intentional. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. I, can, I can see, I, I am away twice now between, <laughs> but I, yeah. I can see if I can help. Okay, when, well, when is the next, when is the next EDC meeting or is it TPZ, TPZ we should be aiming for? TPZ meeting is, uh, what's the fourth Thursday in July? Anybody have a count? Let me see. I think it's the twenty with the twenty fifth sound writer. Hang on a second. I'll be right back. Do you have any input here, Stephanie? Because I know you're working on the POCD. It'll be the twenty third is the next meeting. Um, and then after that, I think it's August twenty seventh. Okay, so I mean. My, it, my you don't, I mean, if you just want to write a quick note saying, you, you, you know, you, I mean, I don't, I, 
don't need to have anything at this meeting, I would imagine, unless you want to just say, hey, let's uh, give us a little bit more time. Please put it yeah. off in September. And, and, I, and I think we'd, we would be better prepared to, to do something more in August than in uh, for that July meeting. Yeah, okay. No, July, I think, is just going to be discussion at the end of the meeting. It's not going to be. Okay. It's not going to be an in-depth discussion. It's just going to be a summary, and here's what hopefully they, they'll have a chance to look at, at it, and then set it for a, set it for a hearing or for further discussion. Okay. Yeah. So if we, if they could set it for a further discussion, then we could come to that meeting with some with some uh, things that we've looked at a little bit more thoroughly be, between now and then. And that would give us more time. It's just hard to get people together over the summer, but I'll send out some dates to people, and um, and hopefully we can get something good put together for the August August TPZ. That would be August TPZ. We would be going to. Right. Okay. Charlie, this is Nancy. Yeah. Um, I'd, be, I'd be happy to work on that subgroup. Great. Thank you. And is Seth is Seth still on? I believe so. Or maybe not. Yes, she is. Seth Seth is still here. Yes. Okay, because I know one of your interests, Seth, was in in preserving agricultural land, and I think that's one of the things that that keeps coming up in this uh, topic is, um, you know, if there are other places, brownfields or old landfills or just land that has been degraded in some way that's really a much better place to cite these things um, so i didn't I know that Seth is here anymore looks like we've lost him who Seth. 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 yeah I, I haven't seen him on yeah okay all right well i had asked him to look into that but he's gone so there you have it um all right so i will send something around get us organized and uh we'll See what we can do. That's great. Thanks, everybody. Um, drought advisory status, draft recommendations for town actions. I think, Paula, this was something you were. Yeah, working on, yes. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Let me let me gather my thoughts here for a moment. I've got a mm -hmm. ship from solar. Um, yeah. So let's see. I, I attended the... Um, I sat in on the Water Planning Council meeting um, just because I thought that it would be, an, there, I thought one of the topics on it would sort of get into drought advisory and maybe be a little bit more um, helpful in terms of um, what kinds of things a municipality could do. Um, this came up because um, I don't know if others on um, in the meeting tonight got a notice from the town, but there was a, a notice that the town sent out around June 18th, um, triggered by kind of a exceptional dryness um, advisory from the state um, about flash drought conditions. And, you know, it was great because that was kind of a very, very much of an early warning kind of thing. Um, I had a short conversation with the town manager after just through happenstance. And um, apparently Stephanie um, had talked to him and the two of them had been, you know, <laughs> they'd seen that and they had gotten something out, which was great. So um, they're proactive, which, um, and they're paying attention to water. And I know the, the, um, the new town manager, you know, came from Bisbee, Arizona, so he's from the West and he's, you know, he pays attention when they're, you know, when things are dry, which is, mm -hmm. which is a good thing. Um, we're, we're, you know, we're, we're a bit different um, being in Bloomfield, being an MDC um, service area town. Um, so we have um, a good, you know, portion of the town getting MDC water, which is reservoir water. Uh, the last time I looked, uh, the reservoir capacity was at 95%. Um, MDC wants you probably using as much water <laughs> as you as you possibly can, even if things are dry, because with COVID and everything else, they are you know they're you know they're always looking for revenue, and I think things have been a bit tough, at least on the corporate side of things. Um, but we do have some 
um, community water systems, community wells in town. And we also have a lot of private wells in town. So what to do, you know, we're, we're not like a, we're not like a town with a municipal water, with its own municipal water system um, that issues the drought advisory potentially mm -hmm. about, you know, even, even, even addresses you water on one day of the week and odd addresses you water on the other day of the week. Um, you know, we need to pay attention to this, but we've got large surface reservoir with MDC. We've got individual wells. People can tell us to go pound sand if we try to tell them what to do because mm -hmm. they have their own wells. And then we have community wells. So um, the, the, the question is, um, can CEC come up with maybe some recommendations for the town in terms of policies and advisories and what to put out there in the event of drought? And the, um, the state interagency drought committee work group mm -hmm. was meeting again today to sort of assess <laughs> the situation. Uh, both Val and I sat in on a, um, a different group meeting today um, with water people. And um, the rain that we've had recently has helped, but you know, part of the state is still very dry. The good news is over the next couple of weeks, the entire northeastern part of the country is supposed to get some rain, which should help alleviate the problem, um, which is good from the perspective of giving us time to do something before we get into the crisis situation. So um, I think the manager is looking for us um, working with Stephanie, um, and Stephanie can jump in here too with her, her thoughts on it. But um, I think you know, I, it would be appreciated if we could come up with some recommendations for the town. Um, I don't think it's something we can do by tomorrow because I think it's a little bit more complicated just because of the various sources of public water supply mm -hmm. that right. we have in town. So in a nutshell, that's the situation. Okay. So do you want to put a smaller group together to work on that? Um, I would like to work with Stephanie, and mm -hmm. um, I'm hoping um, if anyone else wants to jump in, I'm hoping Val will certainly, um, you know, participate as well. Um, I don't know that we have a hard, hard deadline on this, but I think mm -hmm. at least she and I working with Stephanie would make some sense. Great. What do you think, Val? Are you okay with that? She's nodding. Anyone else want, you know, is welcome. Uh, this is Nancy. I don't necessarily want to be on the group, but I just want to throw a conspiracy theory in. Go for it. Because <laughs> I can't help it around uh, MDC because I know that the year that there was all, the major brouhaha about Niagara, they were one of the last, uh, you know, water agencies to say there was a drought when there was. They had to be kind of talked into it. And I know that they have great reservoirs and great, you know, I mean, we have, they have good reservoirs. So that's, that's the bottom line, but you know, they don't really want to draw attention to drought because of course we know that Niagara does not have to cut back at all. So, and that's been an issue every time we've had hearings on their rates, et cetera. In fact, you know, they're going to want to pump as much as possible now because they have the incentive, you know, to get their, their water discount. So there was around the time of, of the town notice coming out um, information come you know on the weather on TV about that time about our portion of the state not the whole state but our portion being in moderate drought I think they said so you know I mean I think it's good information for people uh, you know when you're in drought you don't know how long it's going to last either so you know early warning I think is good for people and um, yeah we you know we know MDC will work on its own time for, timetable. Well, but, I, uh, yeah. I, I, I just I think like in the terms of, that we do yeah. our own thing. Yeah. And, and, and yes, and, and all of that is good input. I think, I think the point is, is, you know, what kinds of things do you want to put out in terms of just sort of informational advisories in terms of if you want to craft any kind of ordinance um, that's got any kind of teeth to it, you know, how do you do that? So um, all the yeah. things you're talking okay. about, Nancy, make it more complex. So... <laughs> 
All right. Yep. Okay. So this next uh, this next topic on the um, communications committee and the update on the website and and email. Um, this is all geared at getting us out there in town and more visible in town. And we've had lots of good ideas popping around and um, Claudia is back and, uh, and Val. Um, so Val, could you just first update us on, on what you found out about the website and, and Jose step in here too, because I think you're working with that as well. It's pretty outdated. Um, yeah, I sent, sent that little notice around just so that everybody could click on what we have as a link, which, you know, is, is hard to find if you're, if you're just a resident looking for the information. It is. Yeah. You'd have to go to government and boards, and we're not really a board, but, but we're listed under there. Um, and then the, hmm. it was nice that they put up our charges and listed um, some activities we have been involved in, but it's particularly um, kind of undeveloped and old and unexciting. So, um, you know, one issue is doing what we can to, to update the town website. And I think Claudia has a lot of ideas, although that, that, that may be one of our current avenues. It's, it's, you know, it's a, it's not going to get us the kind of, um, spread of information we're hoping for. So I'm going to turn it over to her. Well, I actually have two ideas. Great. Um, one of them is, uh, I totally agree with Val that I wouldn't have even been able to find CEEC on the town website. Being, you know, just some, an outsider. You guys are insiders, but outsiders, and I think we're trying to communicate with outsiders, so that's a problem. And, um, but since it is there and there's a person designated at the town whose name is Abby, I believe, um, who's, uh, who has the job of putting our stuff in, we really have to maintain that information. Otherwise, it looks like we're not doing anything. We just don't have anything going on. So, so there's a... Um, there's space to put down what our priorities are and what's going on in the current moment. And there's a calendar function as well. And there might be an email uh, blast function as well. So I, I told Val that I would look into all that. And I, I think you have to maintain it, but it may not be working in terms of communicating with the general public about environmental issues in Bloomfield. Um, because they can't find the information. So maybe we should consider a second, um, more marketing oriented um, activity, like what the Winterberry Land Trust does, which I think is very effective. And I always read it and I love the pictures. And I would think that uh, a constant contact kind of blast would be good, but I don't know who it would go to. So we'd have to find out if we could use the entire town uh, email list, if there is one. Um, and, you know, there would be some research that would be required, but so that's the second idea. And I know we have the, the Bloomfield Messenger. I had been thinking about having kind of a standing column. We have Kevin in there every, every couple of editions, one counselor's view and um, something like that, that would all, so people would come to expect something from the environment committee if you can get anything in there, but it's hard. Well, um, I haven't been successful um, in the past, but I haven't done an all out, you know, attempt either. And I, I think that is a good idea and it's, it has much more visibility if people read it. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, you know, it's not buried. It wouldn't be buried. Whereas I'm afraid that the town website, which is very well organized, it kind of buries things because um, there's so much material in there. So, mm -hmm. uh, but I'm, yes, I'm happy to do all three things. I just need to know from you and I can do this uh, through 
uh, individual connection. Just what are the priorities? What are we excited about? I did that newsletter piece um, working with Charlie and uh, thought that went pretty well. I don't know if it's when it's gonna be published, but those were high priorities uh, that we wanted to communicate. It, do you know, Charlie, when it's coming out? I have no idea. I lost track of it in the COVID. Um, okay. Should have should have come out a long time ago. I, some of that stuff is probably pretty outdated. But I'd be happy to sit down with you and um, just kind of go over what our priorities are and what would kind of lend itself to um, getting the public interested, perhaps, and uh, plugging in. And Jose, I, I'd love to get an area where people can sign up to be notified for the meetings. I know I, I send to a few people in addition to the committee, but, and I'd like to put together a larger listserv um, for of people. We're not, Jose, yeah. we're not hearing um, you, Jose. Still now. Okay, so we'll we'll uh, carry on. So Claudia, you and I offline could could uh, talk, and we can perhaps put together a plan. I know Val was was interested in too, but she's going to be away for a little while, um, and just really start getting uh, updating that website, and we'll get uh, input from other people on appropriate projects. And, okay, okay, that's great. That's exactly what I needed. Can you hear me now. Started. We can hear you now. Yeah. All right. I don't know what there was some. I, did, I just changed the little thing, but anyway, yeah, I've been trying to get a. You are able to, in, in theory, uh, you should people should be able to sign up for your uh, agendas on. There's a page where you can sign up for a whole bunch of different. But uh, uh, I'll look into it. I, I've been trying to get Abby to give me permission, and mm -hmm. uh, and, and I've been communicating with her all week because I, she kept telling me to try to go on and. Mm -hmm. I couldn't even uh, change out the agenda because there were some bad links on the uh, uh, tonight's meeting on on the agenda, and I just wanted to post a new one on there, and, and I wasn't able to. I finally just gave emailed her, and she was able to do that. But uh, she's she I wasn't in, in the office today, but she did email me, telling me that I she thinks I'm I'm okay now. So we'll we'll see when I get in tomorrow. I'll okay. try to do a, a small edit, and then uh, if you have things. I'll add a little uh, button where people can just click to get to the subscription page for the for the mm -hmm. agendas. That would be a good that would be a good start. And then as we have meetings and so on, we can get people emails and and have them sign up and and build up a a list of people um, gradually so that we have a broader base that we're talking to. I I just yeah sorry go ahead now. No no I so so what currently exists which I would like to change and I. We're trying to get trying to connect with Abby about it. You are currently allowed to subscribe to receive the agenda and the minutes of the committee, but there is no um, on the home screen for the town. There's a certain list of committees where you can you will automatically receive like their announcements or their events. That isn't currently an option for our committee. I mean, okay. relative subcommittee of. So I, I'd like to see if we could be added there so that say when a presentation comes up like the pollinator program, as we you know build a list of things, we can send it out to people who have come to events or subscribe. Because right now all they can do is sign up for uh, agendas and minutes. Yeah, I don't know how that works. I, I know agendas and minutes. Uh, I think there's ways, because when I edit my any anything on my planning and zoning, it always asks me send if I want to check off the box to send a, a subscription. So there, there's got to be a way of, of, of allowing people to. to yeah, you. you people you, every time a, a web page changes, even not not necessarily an agenda or a minute. Yeah, because yeah, I think because your committee is you know a higher level committee, so to speak, with um, the, the bigger town committees have that. Um, capability, but we're not on that list currently. I'm just trying to see. 
If you go to the home page, there's there's a checklist of where you can I want to receive alerts for, and you'll see, you know, general town alerts, and then uh, there's. I'm a, I'm on the page now, and the. Uh, yeah, there, there's there's news or announcements. Out. Yeah, we can. I'm sure there's a way we can add that if you have a you know every if if, if we put something up in the news and announcements, mm -hmm. town planning and zoning commissions on there, meeting agendas. Uh, you're on there for meeting agendas. Right, we'd like to be on there for news or announcements. Okay, well, uh, I'll, I'll I'll make a note of that and uh, hopefully add you guys to that. That way, when when I do, if I do have uh, the option of doing that, I'll, I'll uh, it'll go out to whoever subscribes on that. Great, that'd be great. Yeah. Okay, so Claudia, I'll reach out to you. And Val, did you want to say something about the um, virtual? HES, because that was one of the things we were talking about putting on a website and, and getting out to people. Yeah, so the, the town actually sent out um, an alert on ever, but it, it's billed as like Eversource's COVID response programs and way down on the list is this great opportunity, which um, they, people can call and sign up for a virtual home energy solutions audit for free, completely for free, which usually costs it $75. And they, they will do it over the phone. And I guess they do a video tour of your house, but I'm not quite sure how the project works. But then when the restrictions are lifted, they will come and physically do the measurement of the uh, door, door ceiling, they'll seal cracks. But at, even after the virtual tour, they will send you LED replacement bulbs. So for anybody who hasn't had a HES audit, they would just have to call the number and, and get on the list at no cost. And we know that like for every, four dollars, uh, for every dollar of energy efficiency, we save four. So I was thinking, I, I talked a little to Claudia about this, like this would be a great thing to somehow highlight um, kind of like what Stephanie did with the drought warning. I know it, it did come out as part of the, the town's announcements, but that wasn't highlighted. And I don't, I don't know if the messenger would allow, you know, would take mm -hmm. a little about that or that, that something that's, you know, currently going on that would be really optimal to highlight. That's great. Yeah, I think we'll just have to keep pushing until we, we get the we know Kevin gets articles in, uh, Sharon Mann gets articles in, so we'll have, just have to figure out their their ways of operating till we can. Yeah, actually, I can I can just offer this. I think yeah. if you have any kind of um, notion of doing something regularly, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. on a regular basis, monthly or something like that, yeah, then I think um, I think the editor likes that because he he has content he can count on, and so. That was what gave rise to the bi-weekly column that Kevin does. Um, that okay. was actually the editor's idea. So and Kevin was happy to do it, so. Okay, very good. Well, we'll report back next time. Um, Shred Day is moving along. The town uh, manager was very happy to uh, have us go ahead and, and do that and work with us. And um, so that's October the 3rd. Um, I made the decision to do it from nine to one rather than 10 to two because we have so many people lining up there before 10. And then we always run out of um, space early in the truck. So we've got lots of, uh, lots of good ideas there. And, and I um, have already talked to the truck person. I will go back to um, Homestead and um, Earthlight we don't really have the same relationship with them as we used to when when we were doing all of the HES um, work with them and they were sort of uh, preferred contractors that seems to have uh, we're not doing any special programs with them but I'll see if they would like to sponsor um, the truck they've they've basically paid for the truck in the past and the recycling truck pays us to for the privilege of coming um, but we may have to take some money out of our account if Eversource and, um, or not Eversource, uh, Earthlight and Homestead aren't interested in picking up the $600 tab because they, they sit off in a tent someplace and everybody just drives by them and they don't really get too many contacts. I don't, I don't think it's a big win for them. 
All right, so the last item is changing the meeting time to 4.30 or five from seven. And I spoke to Marguerite or emailed Marguerite and the town clerk and she said, just let me know what you want to change it to and it'll be done. So 4.30. And, and my thinking is that we just work more uh, we're in smaller committees in between the, the meetings so we can really get some thorough jobs done and then report back to the big group for some guidance and so that our meetings might go a little quicker, maybe an hour and a half. Um, but uh, I'm open to other times. We had 4.35. When do you want to start this? Next meeting. Yeah, I, I think 4.30 better than 5 because, you know, otherwise it start, really starts to run into dinner time. For right, right. And for, for town staff to, you know, be, hand, would, yeah. you know, I don't know, could, or 4.30, I, that's what I would vote for. Okay, and then the goal would be finished to be finished in an hour and a half and, and not two hours. Yep. Okay, any objection to moving it to 4.30? How's staff on that? How is Jose and Stephanie? He's doing cartwheels. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm happy. I, I, okay. I've got nothing left by this time of night. I'm running yeah. on empty. Okay. I know. Early birds though. <laughs> yeah, me too. Okay. Um, any public comments? Okay. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay. Thank you, everybody. That was great. Good to see you all. And uh, lots of work to do between now and the next meeting. Uh, uh, just a quick poll. Are people around in August? I am not. I hope to be in the middle of Maine. <laughs> OK, very yeah. nice. David, are you going to be around? Probably not. Probably not. OK. But if it's Zoom.